hello friends welcome to quick chess videos today we are going to see game between anish giri and vladimir kramnik played in the legends of chess tournament white started with d4 knight f6 d4 e6 Knight f3. Okay, both sides are developing. These are normal moves. D5. This is known as the queen's gambit opening. Knight c3. Knight bd7. Trying to develop the pieces. Bishop f4. White also develops his pieces. Pawn captures on c4. The idea. Of white to sacrifice this pawn is that white is eventually going to play e4 and control central squares and the bishop will one day capture on c4 and this is a temporary pawn sacrifice in this position white played e3 with the idea to capture on c4 and black played a very interesting move over here which is b5 instead of b5 black can play knight d5 to attack this bishop and if the knight captures the knight then pawn will capture and the pawn will be supported and black will have an extra pawn so after knight after knight d5 bishop into c4 knight captures on f4 pawn captures on f4 and this is a very theoretical line knight b6 bishop b3 g6 trying to develop the bishop from here castles bishop g7 queen e2 castles rook d1 and the position is around equal white has white has this slight weaknesses of the pawns but the activity compensates for that weakness and sometimes white can also play d5 and even knight e5 is an idea so white is fine so instead of knight d5 kramnik here played the move b5 which is very interesting and has been played many times before knight captures on b5 the idea is to sacrifice the pawn but gain time for developing bishop b4 check knight c3 black plays knight d5 creating more attack on the pinned piece and also the bishop is attacked and white played a3 okay this is all theory and has been played before knight captures on c3 now if we capture on c3 with the knight the bishop is going to capture and there's going to be a double attack and the rook will be lost so the idea of a3 is that after knight captures knight white plays queen d2 pinning the knight and if the knight moves then the pawn is going to capture the bishop so this happened in the game and black here played bishop into a3 here a very funny move exists which is knight e2 attacking the queen so you cannot capture the knight pawn captures on b4 knight captures on f4 pawn captures on f4 bishop b7 here white can simply play bishop e2 or if he captures on c4 then black has bishop captures f3 pawn captures and white is having the funniest pawn structure in the world so instead in the game after queen d2 black played bishop captures a3 okay now both of the pieces are attacked at the same time but you can only capture one white captured on c3 if 
you capture the bishop then black could probably play knight b1 or king the queen and rook so this is not a good idea so better is to capture the knight with the queen now black protects the bishop by bishop d6 bishop captures d6 pawn captures on d6 now black is threatening to play d5 and support this his extra pawn so white has to finally capture it bishop captures c4 castles and in this position giri played a very interesting move d5 he could have castled and the game could have been more or less symmetrical after d5 but instead white did not like black playing d5 so he himself played d5 a very interesting idea okay black as black played e5 as the pawn was attacked and now he castled now this is a very strategical position in which black should try to create some play in the sense of f5 and trying to do something on the king side because on the queen side black's pieces lack space and probably the squares like c7 and c6 are going to be targets for white's pieces and that that is going to be infiltration squares and the most important weakness in this position for black is the pawn on d6 it is a very loose pawn and also sometimes we can target the a7 pawn this both pawns are isolated and weak whites in case of white this pawn is somewhat weak but as we can see that white controls more space on the queen side it is difficult for black to attack this pawn so, so in this position white has good chances white played a5 black played a5 now there are chances of pin knight d2 regrouping the knight white can maybe play knight e4 attack try to attack d6 or play bishop b5 and bishop c6 white has lot of ideas bishop b7 trying to develop b3 queen b6 now white sees this pawn as a target and hence plays rook a2 with the idea to double up the rooks rook f c8 pinning the bishop and hence threatening bishop captures on d5 so white needs to protect the pawn white played e4 rook c5 black tries to activate his rook and defend the pawn but now the rook on a8 might be loose white plays rook f a1 and creates a very powerful threat of b4 because of the pin you cannot capture rook will capture the rook and it will be problem black played queen d8 and already white is having a very good position white capitalized on it by b4 pawn captures on b4 and rook captures on a8 you cannot capture this because of rook captures d8 is check and knight goes away and if you take the bishop there is simply rook c1 and white is having an extra exchange and will probably win the game instead of capturing the queen black took bishop captures on a8 queen captures on b4 and again 
we will try to look at this position again many of the pawns are exchanged yet white is having a very good position because of this major weakness white can easily attack this as the rook cannot move the queen will directly capture it and there are all sorts of ideas like knight b3 and attacking the rook the bishop on a8 is doing nothing and white is much much better in this position h6 trying to make space for the king rook a6 attacking the pawn on d6 black protects it by knight f6 white plays bishop f1 he wants to bring his knight to c4 and attack on d6 king h7 rook a7 attacking the pawn on f7 black played rook c8 sacrificing this pawn but if he had played king g8 then white's idea would have been blue played knight c4 knight captures on e4 if black captures on e4 then white has this simple idea of knight captures on d6 if the knight captures then he loses the rook and if the queen captures then he loses the bishop as well as the knight and white is in a completely winning position and instead of knight captures e4 there are threats like knight captures on d6 and rook captures on e8 which makes black's position very tough so instead he decided to sacrifice the pawn after rook a7 by playing rook c8 now white captured the pawn on f7 rook b8 attacking the queen now white is a full healthy pawn up and should win this game queen a3 trying to maybe bring the king queen to a7 or even g3 black <coughs> exchanges white's powerful rook on f7 by rook b7 white accepts the exchange of rook because he is having an extra pawn rook captures on b7 bishop captures on b7 knight c4 again this is a very big weakness knight e8 defending the pawn queen a7 attacking the bishop queen c7 knight a5 attacking on the pinned piece the bishop cannot the bishop has to move bishop c8 queen captures on c7 knight captures on c7 and in this end game white is having an extra pawn and the most important thing in his position is the weakness on d6 still remains and it will be captured one day white continued knight c4 now the only move to protect this pawn is knight e8 you cannot defend it with knight b5 because of this trick and white will be winning easily in this bishop endgame with his two extra pawns black played knight e8 white played knight b6 attacking the bishop bishop had to move bishop g4 f3 again attacking the bishop bishop h5 and white played knight c8 and black here resigned because the next move is going to be bishop b5 anyhow and the again the next move is going to be bishop to be bishop captures knight and black cannot avoid that and after that taking the pawn on d6 and white will be two pawns up and in a completely lost end game hence kramnik resigned after knight c8 a great technical positional win by anish kiri if you like the video please contribute by liking sharing and subs subscribing thank you